Thank you. So this is the thing. Um, 2013, how many of you made any kind of, you know, lie that I'm going to do this <laughs> in 2013? And, and, and you set a goal, right? You set a goal, you say like, 2013, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to lose the weight I couldn't lose in 2012, and I'm going to go for it. Or I'm going to get good grades, or whatever it is, right? We all set goals, right? for the beginning of the year. But, most of the time, we fail. Like, January, that's when most people sign up for gym classes. <laughs> yes, three weeks later, they drop. January, that's when most people go to church, because they think, oh yeah, this year I'll go to church. And then, a couple weeks later, eh, let me turn on the game. And it happens. So, why it doesn't work? What happens? They lack motivation. Exactly. They're just, what's triggering their actions is not the right thing. So today I want to talk about let's change how we change. That's what's going to, going to be what we we'll talk about. And I'm going to turn to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, 6, and 7. And it says this, Now that you have welcomed the anointed one, Jesus the Lord into your lives it says continue to journey with him and allow him to shape your lives let your roots grow down deeply in him and let him build you up on a firm foundation be strong in the faith just as you were taught and always spill over with thankfulness but if it was too long, you, I lost you like three words after it. <laughs> Let me just repeat one part right here. It says, continue to journey with Him. Continue. There's a continuation. And really, there are like two kinds of people. There's like task-oriented people, right? There's people about projects. Give me a project. I want a project, and I'll get it done. Uh, how many of you have done projects for school? Science projects. And why are you thinking about, I just want to finish this thing, right? I just want to get over this. So there are projects, and there are process. Two different things. And sometimes we look at our lives as projects. We think, okay, uh, I'll go to church. I'll say, yes, I'll, I'll make a prayer done. I'm new. Like, I, I, I hated everybody. Now, I'm loving everybody, right? And, and like, uh, I don't know, I used to always fight with this sin, whatever it is. And now, after this prayer, done. Project done. I'm clean. I'm, I'll never do that again. Real life is, nah, you'll probably do it again, right? Let's be honest. Like, there are things you struggle with and you wish, like you really wish that overnight you could like overcome those things. And, and we get discouraged, don't we? Because we want to, but we can't. I want to stop eating pizza or thinking about pizza every day, but I can't. Like I'm on a diet, I have pizza. When can I get pizza? It's Friday again, it's Friday. Yes, yes, no, oh, man. Because Fridays I can get pizza. <laughs> That's the rule. So, but I'm always thinking about that. I don't, and, oh, and it sometimes it's discouraging. Like you weigh yourself was like, yes, I lost a pound. And then, oh my God, I recovered too, man. <laughs> that shouldn't work like that. But so, and, and we get discouraged and we drop it. We're like, who am I kidding? And we drop. But hopefully today we we get out of here with a different mindset. So. Verse 8, let me get to verse 8. And it says, Make sure no predator makes you his prey through some misleading philosophy and empty deception based on traditions fabricated by mere morals. These are sourced in the elementary principles originating in this world and not in the anointed one. So don't let their talks capture you. The thing is, in our world, there are a lot of traditions, a lot of um, different, you know, mindsets, 
and and ideologies and some of them look kind of spiritual but they're not and some people will tell you oh just think happy thoughts and whatever you dream it will happen and it's just like uh, not really there, there are a lot of things that sound good but they're not good some people who mix a little bit of Christianity with a little bit of Buddhism and a little bit of, of world wisdom and, and they mix them together and it's like here it is it does work like that and here the apostles say don't don't be confused don't let yourself be fooled so again coming back to the main idea main idea today your life is not a project it's a process it's gonna take time it's not like when you when you're gonna paint the room, right? And you just it's done. It's like yes, I finish. No, your life is a little bit more complicated than a room that needs to be painted, right? It's a bit more complicated than that. So let's go back to verse six. Now that you have welcomed the anointing, Jesus the Lord, into your lives, continue the journey. I remember. I remember. When I first gave my life to Jesus, like not when I was like eight, not like the re like when I was like aware of who I was and what I wanted, and I remember I was 15, going to 16, and um, and and God touched my life, and I was like, yeah, like this 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 one is different, and I knew there was a lot of things that needed to change. But I struggle with them, and there are many that I that I continue struggle with. Like, let's be real. There's a lot of things that I'm still like, oh man, I feel like I'm still 16. And and sometimes it was again a bit discouraging, and I was like, but why? And and I will get mad not at God, but I will get mad to myself. Like you're so stupid. Like why? God has been so good. God has done this for you and over and over. Like, why can't you change? Like, I will, like, scream at myself, right? And I will, you know, punch myself in the face. Like, ah, you, human. Like, why? But, but when I read this, it was so powerful to me. Because, yeah, sometimes, I mean, you read the stories, right? And you read about Paul. We used to kill Christians and boom, one encounter with Jesus changed his life. Overnight, like, oh my God. And you obsessed with that one dude in the whole Bible whose life was changed in an instant. And, and we miss to see the other thousands of guys who went through a process of 40 years or went through a process of seven years or a process from from the cradle to the grave, right? And through their lives, Jesus was continually doing something. And this verse again says, now that you welcome Jesus to your lives, continue to journey with Him, and the next is key, and allow Him to shape your lives. Let's recognize one thing, guys. Our lives need to be shaped. And shaping takes time. It's not like today when we have all these factories and, and, and everything is mass production. And, and the products end up like in a second. No, this is like when the artist will sit down with a piece of rock, a block, that it's nothing, it's a block. And like some years later, it's a masterpiece, the David. And it's like, the Venus of Milo. And it's like, it took years, years. It's not something that you just click the button and the masterpiece is done or painted. The 16th chapter took years 
the Mona Lisa took a long time. Masterpieces take time, and you are a masterpiece in pro in process. You're not a masterpiece today. Like you're not everybody's, you know, piece of gold or a cup of tea. But your life is in process. And let me tell you guys, most of you, you're not the same. You're not the same girl that you were two years ago. You're not. You're not the same guy you were two years ago. You're not. And and I can testify of that. Yes, you're not perfect. But you're not the same. You're clearly not the same. Why? Because Jesus is working in you. So let's let's recognize that it will take time. There are things that you will overcome easily than others. But your life is still a process. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For it's by God's grace that you have been saved. Now is that past or present? Let me read it again. For it's by God's grace that you have been saved. Past, right? Past present. You have been saved. You have. So yes. Like whenever it was that you gave your life to Jesus. Yes you were saved. And you are as saved as you will ever be. You were saved. But. Let me read you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It says. On verse 16. So we have no reason to despair. Despite the fact that our utter humanity is failing apart and decaying, our inner humanity is breathing a new life every day. In every day. So is that past or present? It's present. So you were saved, but every day you are being saved. You see, there's a, a transition from the past to the present. And let me give you one more. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5 says, Through faith, God's power is standing watch, protecting you for a salvation that you will see completely at the end of things. That you will see completely at the end of things. Is that, is that past? Is it present? Or is it future? There is a transition. It's a process. Let me tell you. God is more patient with you than what you are with yourself. God is more patient with you than your best friend is with you. God is patient. Don't, don't fall in despair, guys. Whenever you, you find yourself doing that thing you, you promised you wouldn't do again, and you're like, ah, man, I did it. God is patient. God is loving. What do you mean? <laughs> that, <laughs> I thought that was clear, but okay. Uh, like, sometimes, you, you promise, I'm not doing this, whatever this is for you. I'm not talking back to my parents anymore. 20 minutes later, guess what you just did? You talk back. Oh, like he works patiently. Exactly, he is patient. And sometimes you get desperate, like, ah! I said I wouldn't do this again. And you're like hitting yourself against the wall, like, ah! Or you're just choking yourself with a pillow, like, oh! And, 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 and you're like, I don't know, that didn't sound like a pillow, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but whatever the case is, like, like you, you freak out. God doesn't. Like, we can recognize that God has a process with you. Now, this is no excuse, right? This is not to say, like, hey, well, you know, it's a process. No, 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 no. This is not a cop-out. This is an empowering statement. Again, not to give you an easy way out, but to give you peace. Because it's not the same to try and, and, you know, like, God, please work in me. Holy Spirit, show me what you want. And then, yes, I know I, I'm not perfect, but I want, like, in my eyes, I have the goal. 
that's the goal, and I'm walking to it. It's not like, eh, well, it's whatever, pause it. We'll talk about it No, no, no. Like, you, you want this process to continue. So it's not a cop out. It's not like, hey, mom, you know, Leo said it was a process, okay? So give me a break. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's just, this is for yourself. It's like, even when the world is pointing at you and telling you, because I heard from you guys, like, your friends are like, I thought you were Christian. I thought you were changing. This is for, for your own soul to be like, Yes, I know, and I'm sorry, but it's a process. This is to give you peace. That one day, at the end of things, you will see completely the salvation you were called to. You will see it. Let me tell you a story, guys. There was this guy uh, who is uh, Phil Collins, I think. He wrote a book. It's, it's a great business book, and, and at one point he heard the story about this general. Uh, his name is the General Stockdale. This guy, he was a, his hero, a prisoner of war in, in the war of Vietnam, and he was held captive for eight years and tortured over 20 times during that time. And, and he was in prison with many others, right? And this guy, Collins, he heard the story of, of this Almer and, and he went to meet with him. And let me read you, it's, it's part of his book. And he asked him like, okay, I wanna know. Because sometimes like you, you see a story, right? Or you read a story and like you know how it ended. And it's like, oh, right, right. And sometimes you wonder like, for example, you're watching a movie, a horror movie. And you know like the, the, the monster or the, or the evil person or whatever, it's in the kitchen, and you see the other person like walking, like, ah, no, 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 going through the kitchen. You're like, no, 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 don't go there, right? Because you, you, you have the advantage point, like, you know what's happening, you know what's going to happen. You're like, you're so dumb, don't. I told you, right? And, and you're getting mad at the TV. But because you have that advantage point, like, you know the story. But, so, but this person was like, how, how you did it? Because at the end, you didn't know how the story was going to end. You're in prison. You're being tortured. How did you survive? And the, je- the Almer replies and says, like, I never lost faith in the end of the story. Again, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never doubted not only that I would get out, but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining event of my life, which in retrospect, I will not trade. Yeah. And, and then the, the author said that they were walking in, and he asked, okay, and so, and who didn't make it? And, and Stockdale replied, oh, that's easy, the optimist. What do you mean? You were an optimist, right? Because you knew that that you were going to get out, or, so what do you mean? And they're like, no, yeah, the optimists. They were the ones who said, oh, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas will come, and Christmas will go. And then they say, oh, oh we're going to be out by Easter. And Easter will come, and Easter will go. And then, oh, Thanksgiving. And then it will be Christmas again. And they die of a broken heart. Again, this, this guy was in prison for eight years. Eight years. And then there was silence, right? And they, they were walking and they silence. And then Stockdale sp- started speaking again. He says, this is a very important lesson. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose. So don't, don't lose hope, you will prevail. But don't confuse that faith with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Don't confuse hope that uh, one day, I'll, I'll see the light. But don't confuse that hope with the fact that you need to confront what's going on right now. 
So it's two different things. So basically, the, the author said that, that after that conversation, he could see, like, whenever that was happening, like, guys, deal with it. We're not going out on Christmas. Like, don't set a date. Like, oh, yeah, well, Christmas, we'll be out. Deal with it. We are in prison. We are being tortured. Deal with it. Yes, I know one day we'll be out. But in the meantime, we need to survive. We're here. And, and he made it out. And, and when I was thinking in all of that, something came, came in mind. Like, I mean, all of you have iPods, iPhones, iPad, MP3s, wherever it is. Have you synced your device huh? once, right? What? When you're syncing your device to the computer, you plug it in, right? Shows up in your computer, and you're transferring files, whatever it is, music, photos. You're transferring something from one device to the other, so it's syncing, right? It's syncing. Like, if you have iTunes, you will see this, this arrows going in a circle, right? It's a syncing. And then there's a message that says, do not disconnect. Have you seen that? Well, let me tell you this. Your life is sinking. That there are things changing in your life. Like God is downloading stuff into your hard drive. And you're, you're receiving day by day, every week. You're getting something from Him. But it's very important. Don't disconnect from God. Or else like you will lose. You will lose it. You, you will stop receiving what you were receiving. And once the sinking is done, like, yeah, hey, it's done. But in the meantime, don't disconnect it. So, let me tell you, our life, our whole life, is a sinking process. We're not perfect. We're not done. We're not a project. Right? There is a reality that we're going through stuff. It's like, guys, like, you're teenagers, you are a hormone. You don't have hormones, you are a hormone, right? And there are things that go on in your life and you're like, oh my God, it's, it's gonna happen, right? You're gonna grow up, you're gonna grow old and then you're gonna, you know, pass through that point. <laughs> but, probably when you're like 60 or something. But, <laughs> just kidding. But like, there, there are things in your life that you wish you can, you know, escape from, or but they're there. So, again, I told you in the beginning, there are two kinds of people. Some of us are very task-oriented. You have a list of tasks, you know you have to do this, and you're, you're, you know, it's about order. I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and, and every time you check mark something, it's like, yes.